Honorable colleagues, I welcome you to today's sitting. On Tuesday, 25th April 2023, the State Minister for Kampala Capital City and Metropolitan Affairs, Honorable Chofa Kawie, attributed KCCS Limited Road Maintenance to underfunding, budget cuts, and delays in release of funds. To effectively improve the city roads and drainage infrastructure, Kampala City needs a Marshall Plan to revamp the roads and drainage infrastructure. This plan shall require an estimated funding annually of Uganda shillings 80, 800 period over the next 10 years. Minister of Finance should finance. commit more funding towards development and improve, stroke improvement of KCC roads so as to, so that the interventions are commensurate uh, to the network coverage. Since we haven't finished the budgeting process, let's go back on the drawing board to ensure that a certain big portion is directed to Kampara City so that we can maintain these roads to a motorable situation. In the budget allocations that we are planning, there is zero for drainage. Big shame. Why are these roads being washed away? It's because of the heavy run of water. For as long as you don't allocate money for drainage, even if you make as many roads, they will be washed away. Because Uganda is at the equator, it receives tremendous amounts of rains. In Parliament will start an inquiry into the circumstances under which the Minister for Energy and Mineral Development waived taxes worth 616 billion shillings on gold exports. The decision to start the investigation followed a motion by the leader of the opposition, Honorable Mathias Mpuga. You are a duly issued demand payments, notices to collect the levy. However, some gold refiners made a, com uh, a complaint against the same and filed a suit in a court where an interim order has been issued. And in order to provide clarity and further engagement, the entire industry to enable seamless implementation. The minister, who is myself, wrote to Uganda Revenue Authority to request that implementation of this statutory instrument be halted until further guidance was provided. At stake is 616 billion worth of taxes effectively the minister waived by this two star instrument. We want this honorable minister to lay on the table eh, the directive of the president that effectively instructed her to write off that money. The powers given to the minister is to make regulations on levies, on fees and charges. Areas, tax areas are not provided under that. So if you made an instrument on tax arrears, then that instrument is defective from the onset and you exercise powers that you did not have. Let me speak, uh, I beg to move under uh, Rule 59K that the House considers a motion without notice to constitute the Executive Committee under Rule 190 to consider the circumstances under which the Minister, by such an instrument, waived government taxes um, from what's supposed to be 616 billion, 43 billion, under which the structural instrument was issued. Also consider the agreements between URA and the gold exporters that have not been tabled on the floor of parliament. During the sitting, the Minister of Works and Transport was directed to present an update on the regulations to operationalize the Inland and Water Transport Act 2021. We have children going to school on boats. We have fishermen who are drowning. And even when you go to stations, police stations, I'm told, uh, Makero researchers, they found there were no statistics in the tennis parliament. We passed the Maritime Act. But up, up to now, the regulations operationalizing that act have not been brought. So it's just lying idle. Putting marks on the dangerous spots on the lake. Mr. Speaker, the minister told me to remind him. I even wrote a letter reminding him. 
and he said no we are going to go around and and you know do a survey again it should be taken urgently because the lake well much as we use it it is dangerous we have uh, a season where people cannot travel safely uh, because of the strong winds the minister of works promised that they would build rescue centers at least some with some of the districts in the lake namayingo buvuma Kalangala, Kome Mukono, and, and some other uh, districts that have islands. We should be seeing some efforts that when our people, particularly in the lake, get accidents, the efforts that government has put a mechanism to rescue them. On Wednesday, 26th April 2023, President Yoweri Museveni returned the Anti Homosexuality Bill 2023 to Parliament with proposals for reconsideration. I have received the Anti Homosexuality Act 2023 for assent. Some of the provisions of the bill need to be reconsidered and reviewed by Parliament in the following areas. One, distinguishing between being a homosexual and actually engaging in acts of homosexuality. It is important to recognize that the suspicion, allegation, or belief of some of, of some individuals being homosexuals has been with our society for quite some time. Indeed, the bet has always been whether the sexuality of these individuals is deviant conduct or otherwise. What is clear is that our society does not accept homosexual conduct or actions. Therefore, the proposed law should be clear so that what is sought to be criminalized is not the state of one having a deviant uh, proclivity, but rather the actions of one acting on that deviance or indeed promoting the same in whatever way. To this end, the bill should be reviewed and include a provision that clearly states, especially under section two and section three, that for avoidance of doubt, a person who is believed or alleged or suspected of being a homosexual, who has not committed a sexual act with another person of the same sex, does not commit an offense under those sections. This distinction, must be clearly articulated in the law. In view of the above concerns, I return the bill to Parliament for reconsideration under Article 91 of the Constitution. Joel K. Seveni, President of the Republic of Uganda. I hereby refer the bill to the Committee on Legal and Parliamentary Affairs to expeditiously handle. On the day, Parliament held a special sitting to pay tribute to the former Permanent Secretary and Secretary to the Treasury, the late Keith Muhakanizi. Mr. Case Muhakanizi had, has had an illustrious and distinguished career spanning more than 38 years, serving in various capacities in the, in the public service of Uganda, where he played a crucial and immense role in the social and economic transformation of Uganda. He was someone who was open-minded focused, direct, decisive, and never feared to speak his mind on matters he regarded as important for our national development, including challenging us as parliament, especially on issues of budget allocations. His contributions toward strong macroeconomic policies will never be forgotten, but they have made an indelible mark on the economic development of our country. Mr. Makanizi was a straightforward professional who always spoke his mind on policy matters, uncomfortable as sometimes would be to some authorities. Because of his straightforwardness, this country has lost, probably, and I'm using the word probably on purpose, the last break and the controls on a vehicle called irresponsible budgeting. He had so much passion for economic recovery and development that uh, even when he was transferred to the prime minister's office, Keith, as I said, somewhere, would never spend a week without coming to the ministry. In the day's sitting, parliament put the Ministry of Health to task to legitimize its partnership with Kilembe Mines Hospital in order to continue offering health care services to the people of Kasese. Lack of legal status also erodes the confidence of health development partners and stakeholders 
in providing support to Kileme Mines Hospital. The committee recommends in the short term, Ministry of Health should engage Kileme Mines Limited about the possibility of signing a bilateral agreement to offer health services to the community. This should include an evaluation of the repurposed facility opposite the old facility, which is currently offering services to be supported as a health center for. The Solicitor General should provide a legal opinion about the status of Kileme Mines Hospital within one month of adoption of this report. In the meantime, we are putting up a health facility within the vicinity of Kileme Mines to serve the population. We have moved to ask the district local leadership to deploy all the workers of Kilembe Mines within the public facilities where they are available to decongest many of the health facilities around. Also in the city, the State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Honorable John Molimba, revealed that the post-Cotonou partnership agreement between the European Union and the Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific countries has not been signed by Uganda. I have put in place mechanisms to remind heads of missions to desist from conclusion of binding commitments evidenced international treaties without referring the matter to the Ministry for Consultation, Evaluation and Consent. The post partnership agreement between the EU and the OSCPs has not yet been entered. It has not yet been entered into force. It has so far been initialed by the chief negotiators and not any representative of government of Uganda. They tried to bulldoze us, and this is what we told them. So you need to communicate to our ambassadors. Because they took it that since your chief negotiator initialed, it's a done deal. On Thursday, 27th April 2023, the deputy speaker, Thomas Taewa, criticized security agencies for the brutal arrest of 11 female members of parliament and urged government to investigate the arresting officers. Some are bleeding. Uh, some, the clothes were torn. It was as if they were arresting terrorists. That brutality was absolutely not warranted. We passed the instruction to release them unconditionally. I want to promise this house action will be taken and uh, we shall inform the house. Orders on actions illegally done really do not matter. An illegality with or without an order is an illegality. And wait for action on the officer that have manhandled these honor members of parliament. Our colleagues have been unconditionally released. I want to thank the Speaker of Parliament who has self drove the CPS uh, to fall upon the matter ensure that our colleagues are released, and she even drove with them up to the precincts of parliament. On Tuesday, the prime minister shall bring a statement with regard to this issue of stopping Women's, women's Day celebrations when the Minister for Gender guided all female MPs, women district representatives, to organize Women's Day celebrations in their area. I adjourned the house to Tuesday at 10.